Welcome to Star Citizen and the Crusader Spirit C1. Because with version 3.21.1, the Crusader Spirit C1 is available in Star Citizen. And in advance, there were changes to the original concept, because the Spirit C1 should actually have 48 SCU cargo capacity and can now have 64 SCU. The components are similar to the A1 variant, completely in military versions and offer a very good lasting performance. The C1 is the cheapest version of the Spirit series, because with an original concept price of $100 the Spirit offers a lot. But, however, there is a price increase to be expected, as part of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo in November. Here we expect $10 to $20 more in the War 1 variant and another $10 more for the store credit version. And in this entry-level area we also find other interesting ships, like the Cutlass Blue or the Freelancer series. In terms of speed, the Spirit is in the middle field, with an SEM speed of 155 meter per second and a maximum speed of 1120. In terms of mobility and agility, however, the Spirit series can score points, as with the C1. Here we have 28, 28 and 170 degrees per second at pitch, yaw and roll, so a good value. With the standard armament of 4 size 3, distributed over the wings and the nose turret, the Spirit gets 985 DPS at 600 alpha damage, analogous to the A1 variant, what's already in the game. And in addition, the C1 also has 4 size 3 missiles. And so the C1 can achieve a damage output of almost 10,000 damage points. But at present, the Spirit series can only rely on a size 2 shield generator which currently seems to be very little compared to other ships. Here, however, we are still waiting for an extensive component rework, which should affect all ships, including the Spirit. Therefore, upcoming changes to the equipment components are definitely possible. Visually, the Spirit series can score points with a clear Crusader design. Here we have a lot of clear lines and a very sharp look. A highlight of the Spirit, on the other hand, is the tractor beam that also came into play with the 3.21.1, which we find instead of the remote tower of the A1. The two side 3 hardpoints on the wings can also be extended, as with the A1. And also analogous to the entire Spear series are the foldable VTOL thrusters. These offer excellent thrust not only upwards but also to the sides. Therefore, the C1 can also rely on excellent thrust values. Another highlight of the Spirit series is the ground marking, which is projected and marked in the rear area of the extendable ramp. This ramp offers enough space for smaller vehicles in the wide area, so a drag mule or a rock should fit into the Spirit without any problems. In the exterior area, the C1 differs from the already available A1 by the white paint and the tractor beam instead of the remote turret of the A1. We also get into the interior through the extendable rear ramp, where we first are in a security area, off by a safety door. And here, the entire area, including cargo space, can be seen and used through the drivable tractor beam. But more on that in a moment. The intermediate area between ramp and cargo space we find parts of the ship's components. Subsequently, through the safety door we have access to the cargo space itself, which is equipped with 64 SCU on both sides and the middle gangway. And it should be noted here that the cargo space was originally designed for 48 SCU and has recently been upgraded to 64. Connected to the cargo space, we get into an intermediate area through one of the two round doors, so typical Crusader. And here we find also ship components. And here we have these Crusader typical round double doors to get into the cockpit area. And this area is open and has in addition to space for suits, weapon compartments, two beds, also a kitchen area and the complete equipment in the sanitary area. Here we find the same equipment as in the presented Crusader Spirit A1. The cockpit is analog and offers no special features and is Crusader standard. So for the pilot we have two MFDs and a typical Crusader optics. 
For the Copilot, instead of the remote turret of the A1, we have the option in the use of the remote tractor beam. And here, the operation takes place directly via the Copilot menu. And with that, the tractor beam has a considerable range of action, because we have not only the area above the ship, but alternatively a complete rear area, where the work area reaches into the hangar. So a best possible prerequisite for various cargo gameplay or loading of items. And also new, with all ships with tractor beam, is the new tractor beam view. This shows all the necessary data and ranges. But absolutely unique for the Spirit C1 is the possibility to drive the tractor beam as mentioned and this open a wider work area. So we also have the option to use the upper area with the tractor beam. But it is not possible to change the view with a held cargo piece, so to drive the tractor beam. Here the tractor connection is interrupted. And in contrast to the Crusader A1, we have no interference and collision with the turret facing. Finally, the Spirit C1 is currently an interesting variant of the high-end entry-level ships. So it remains to be seen whether the C1 can benefit from the component rebuild. Because the Spirit series in general seems to be a bit poorly equipped at the moment, especially when it comes to the shields. And with the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo in November, we will experience it in action. Until then, see you soon and see you in the verse. Thanks for watching.